So in this particular figure, we have body two being driven by body four. And there is a point of contact C1 and a common normal to the point of contact. And the common normal intersects the line of sentence at point P1. It can be shown that uh, omega 2 over omega 4, or the ratio of the velocity of body 2 over, over that of the velocity of body 4, is equal to O4 P1 over O2 P1. So in the other body, they have changed position. And there is a new point of contact, C2, and uh, there is still a, a, a common normal. The common normal now still intersects the line of centers at point P. Now, uh, again, it can be shown that uh, omega 2 over omega 4, or the ratio of rotation of the two bodies, is just equal to O4 P2 over O2 P2. Now, uh, when we talk of fundamental law of gearing, then we'll just say that uh, omega 2 over omega 4 has to be a constant value. And, we, and if it is a constant value, then the normal to the time precession contact must always be at point P. Position of P is constant. And that point P, by the way, it's, uh, it's defined as, uh, it's also referred to as the pitch point in the nomenclature of gears. So again, when we talk of the fundamental law of gearing, the surfaces must uh, be in such a way that the common normal must always intersect the line of centers at a certain point P. The position of that point P must always be the same. And uh, therefore, the ratio of rotation of the two bodies is constant. So, uh, currently, it is easy to have uh, just a certain shape and uh, by method of graphical technique or uh, computer graphics, we can define another shape here such that uh, they satisfy the fundamental law of gearing. And this shape is uh, referred to as, uh, or the kind of shape is referred to as conjugate. The surfaces must be having some sort of some uh, profile shape which is conjugate. And uh, when they are said to be conjugate, then they satisfy the fundamental law of gearing. And currently, we can do it by graphical method or by maybe uh, computer graphics. But uh, uh, we can do it. We, we have uh, two standards now of shapes of uh, gear teeth that satisfies the fundamental law of gearing. One is uh, that of a cycloid, and uh, the other is the in volume. The cycloid, uh, the cycloid shape of uh, gear teeth uh, is uh, very difficult to manufacture, and it, it is of course expensive. But uh, cycloid gears has no interference. It has no problem of uh, interference. And uh, also, with cycloid gears, there is no, uh, or there is less sliding action, and so there is less wheel. Unfortunately, again, uh, it's very difficult to manufacture, and of course expensive. So, uh, the most popular shape of gear is the involute type. Uh, it is easy to manufacture, and uh, it is uh, less expensive. And uh, with uh, the involute gears, we can change the distance between the uh, axis of rotation. So if it is the original distance of two shafts, 
which are being uh, uh, which are connected by gears, we can move them away close uh, away from each other, or we can move them close to each other, uh, and this still satisfies the fundamental fundamental law of gaming, and they still maintaining this uh, omega two over omega four constant. 